Now with this video, I would like to highlight the importance and significance of passion in regards to a believer's assurance. Now the question is, do you have passion for the things of God? It's one thing to be able to amen and answer yes to all the right questions, but when it comes to true assurance, the question is, do you have an intense desire when it comes to God? So intense that you find yourself in literal tears at times because of the realities of what you know about Christ come true in such a way that it overwhelms you. Does this ever happen to you? Over the years, my dear brother in Christ, Vody Balkum, has shown us what it looks like when a man is passionately preaching Christ and the tears that come forth because of his passion. It's almost as though he's being broken while preaching. Over the years, I've watched tons of Vody sermons, and it's not often, but every now and then, you'll catch literal tears streaming down his cheeks. Sometimes it's hard to see when the camera's at a distance, but if you look closely, oftentimes you'll find literal tears flowing down his face. Now that's a man that doesn't care about what you think of him or how it makes him look. To me, that is a big part of what it is to be a real man. So in light of passion and desire, I'm going to play an excerpt from Bodie's sermon at Shepherd's Conference this year that perfectly displays a man who was unashamed and on fire for Jesus. It tastes sweet to them. When people say, no, our, our problem is this, our problem is that, we say, no, 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 our problem is that God created the world and God created man and he put man in the garden to keep the garden and he gave the man a command and he held that man to perfect perpetual obedience to that command and he promised him life if he kept it and death if he didn't and he didn't keep it he ate and because he ate, because of that one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. And everyone born from that man through ordinary generation inherited that man's sin nature. And because of that sin nature, sins proceed from it. And our world is broken because of that sin. And we stand guilty before a holy and righteous God. And we know that he's holy and we know that he's righteous and we crave justice. But the problem is that if God gives us justice, we all die. And so that God in his goodness and in his mercy sent forth his son who was not born of ordinary generation but was born of a virgin yes the virgin birth matters why because if he's born of ordinary generation he's born in sin but because he's not born of ordinary generation he's not born in sin he's clean of sin his record is clean and he keeps his record clean and he obeys god's law and because he's fully god and fully man he obeys the law of God on our behalf in his active obedience. And then in his passive obedience, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. All we like sheep had gone astray. Each of us had turned to his own way, but God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And Christ died for sin once for all, the just for the unjust. And God imputes our sinfulness to him. And he nails our sinfulness to the tree. And Christ dies and raises again on the third day for our justification. And there's another imputation. The righteousness of Christ is actually imputed to us so that God can be both just and the justifier of the one who places faith in Jesus Christ. So that all those who come to Christ may enter in. So that all those who place faith in Christ might be saved, but not only saved, but sanctified. Because he's the firstborn of many brethren. We're justified and we're adopted into the family of God. And we're sanctified. And as his children, we begin to bear the family resemblance. And we're further sanctified throughout this life by the very same gospel that saves us. Until one day when it's all said and done, we're not just saved from the penalty of sin. We're not just saved from the power of sin, but one day we're glorified and saved from the very presence of sin. That's the gospel that we preach. That's the gospel that we need. And that's the gospel that's more than enough.